Joining us now uh, from Washington, uh, I believe, uh, uh, Iowa Senator uh, Tom Harkin. Uh, Senator Harkin, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Hi, this is Tom Harkin. Glad to be with you guys. No, then we got the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the right guy. Hey, hey yeah, I, first of all, I, I like your program, Young Turks. I, I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've been a Young Turk all my life, and I'm 66 years old. No, it's, it's, not, it's not about age. It's about what's inside, <laughs> Senator. That's exactly right. You'll be one in 20 years. Uh, you bet I will. Senator, let's start with the uh, issue of the day. Let's start with uh, Michael Hayden, the president's nominee, to be the uh, uh, to head the CIA. There seems to be a surprising amount of opposition to him on the other side of the aisle. Uh, what are your thoughts, and what do you uh, to what do you attribute the opposition among Republicans? Well, I don't know. I, I, I know why I'm opposed to him, and that is because this is a guy that's been in charge of uh, all the secret spying on Americans. I mean, you know, you've been reading about this. You've been hearing about it. And General Hayden is a guy that's been conducting the secret surveillance uh, in violation of uh, the Constitution and the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. So uh, I don't know why the Republicans are opposing him, uh, but I know why I am. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, to be impolite, uh, Senator Harkin, uh, earlier in the program I called him a cover-your-ass appointment. Uh, and the reason I say that is because he seems like he's going to go ahead and cover for this administration, as he has uh, with the NSA warrantless wiretapping uh, uh, situation, where he came out and basically was a spokesman for the administration and saying what a great idea it was to do warrantless wiretapping on Americans. Yeah. Is the reason he's, do you think the reason he's been selected to be the head of the CIA is to further cover for the Bush administration? Well, I have no doubt about it. I mean, they're not about to put someone in there that's going to be independent. I mean, they've, they've, tried, they've politicized the CIA to the nth degree. Um, uh, I've been getting reports from, you know, retired CIA people and stuff that are out there now. In fact, there's going to be one talking to our group here on Thursday uh, who's been blowing the whistle on them. Uh, this administration doesn't really want uh, intelligence. They want confirmation of their ideology. Yeah, well, that certainly seems to be the case. As I was just mentioning, Stephen Capps is somebody they're thinking of bringing back, and he was uh, originally part of the CIA before the Porter Goss shakeup. It seems like he actually would be a decent selection for the head of the CIA. Do you yeah, have any... let, yeah, let's bring him back as a head. Yeah, and, and it's somebody apparently they're comfortable with because they're willing to bring him in as the number two guy. Why not uh, put him in as the number one guy? That's that's a good question. I I, I think they should, and I think that uh, that uh, this Porter Goss. I mean, uh, this guy was a disaster over there, uh, and uh, this now they're bringing in Hayden from NSA, who, as you pointed out, was head of all of our warrantless wiretaps. I mean, uh, you got to wonder where his head is. Yeah, well, you know, in in talking, Tom Harkin, about the uh, about Porter Goss being a disaster, and we can look back and say that it's also probably not a great time to be the head of the of the Central Intelligence Agency, if ever there is a time uh, where it's good to be head of the Central Intelligence Agency. And 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 going back to to talking about Hayden, well, as the Democrats together oppose him, and this is one of my great concerns in this, and and we talked to a Democratic consultant about it yesterday, Senator, is is the idea of a sort of harmonious. Um, I, no, I don't mean attack, but a harmonious opposition to to uh, to Hayden, rather than go after him for a variety of different things. Say, listen, this guy was part of the NSA, uh, part of the NSA wiretapping. He's part of really breaking the law. He endorsed it, supported it, and now will defend it. Uh, and and if we get Democrats saying that in 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 unison, that we should be able to to fight him and not have him uh, become head of the CIA. Do you see that happening? I think it's a great suggestion, and, and I think it could happen. I mean, you know, when you get the Speaker of the House, even opposed to the guy, then you know that uh, there's going to be some rumblings. I think it shows that the president really is in a weakened position. Yeah, he's trying to CYA it, as you say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on his deal. Uh, but I, I, I think a lot of Republicans are going to say, wait a second, this is not right, and they don't want – I mean, they're – you know, they're facing losing the majority here this fall anyway, as you know, in, in next year, which I think, by the way, is going to happen. In the House? Oh, yeah. What about the Senate? Same. I think we're going to run the board. That would, I, be, a, would be a good day. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, as I travel around the country, I mean, people are fed up. You know, I, I came to Congress as a young Turk <laughs> in 1974, and uh, I was 33 years old, and... Um, and we came and we elected 75 Democrats in 1974. And we're all young, progressives, uh, 
guy, Toby Moffat and Chris Dodd, and I think there's only a couple, of, couple, couple of us left. People hadn't even heard of Iowa then. <laughs> hadn't even heard of it. No, heck, no, we were out, we were, you know, flyover country, right. out there, you know. But uh, I'm saying, you know, a lot of people are saying, I don't mean to digress here, but a lot of people are saying this could be like 1994, you know, when the Republicans right. took over, we could switch it this year. I tell you, it's not like that. It's like 1974. Right. When I came in, think about it. 1974, we had a war we were stuck in we couldn't get out of. People were fed up with it. 1973, we had the first oil shocks. Gasoline prices doubled. People were mad about the high price of gasoline. And we had all these scandals, Nixon and Agnew and taking payments from the vice president's office. Nixon had to resign. So what have we got this year? You know, we've got a war we're stuck in, can't get out of. We have got all these oil shocks, the high gas prices. And we've got all these scandals of Abram off and all these Republicans out there. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, it smells like 1974. Well, that's good to hear. And I, I like the sound of it smelling like 1974, not 1994. We're talking to Iowa Senator Tom Harkin. Let me get back to Michael Hayden, if I could, for a second. And, sure. And it's a, a lot of Democrats, I'm sure you've heard as you've traveled not only your state but the country, are not only, of course, uh, angry at this administration, fed up with this administration, as you said, but somewhat angry at Democrats for what they perceive as not fighting back hard enough. And I... I know that all of us here on this show felt like the warrantless wiretapping was such an enormously huge story, of obvious violation of the Fourth Amendment, a clear violation of FISA. But Democrats did not rise up sort of in unison and oppose it. It seems to me now the administration has given you and us another opportunity to point out this egregious breaking of the law. Gets what Michael asked you just a minute ago. That it's not just an opportunity to oppose this guy and defeat him but to deliver a message, a, a sort of coherent, succinct message that Democrats do not stand for breaking the law and spying on Americans without using the judicial branch and getting a warrant. Right on. That's what we got to do, and, and I'm going to do everything I can, and I know Russ Feingold's going to do it, too. We're, we're, we've talked about this. You know, I'm ashamed to say that uh, on Feingold's censure resolution, that's what it's about, by the way, right, censuring no. the president for, for illegal wiretaps. Right. And uh, and this is what Hayden was in charge of. Well, who's got it? Feingold and I and Barbara Box are only three Democrats on it. That's right. I wanted to remind everybody of that. Senator Harkin is only one of three Democrats who are on board for that censure resolution. Barbara Boxer and obviously Feingold is the person who put it together. So, you know, today Senator Feingold said we must get out of our political foxholes and be willing to clearly and specifically point out what a strategic error the Iraq invasion has been. Do you agree with him on that as well, Senator Harkin? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, how much how much lower in the polls does Bush and Cheney have to go? I mean, God, Cheney's at 15 or 18 <laughs> percent. Bush is at 33 percent. I mean, he's like one point above where Richard Nixon was. No, actually, President Bush is now down to 31 percent. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, he may be tied. He's tying Richard Nixon now. Yeah. <laughs> Senator Harkin. So I want to ask in regards to that. We get a lot of uh, loose talk about how the Democrats are, <laughs> ironically, not united. And uh, and that they are not coming out strongly enough. I gotta wonder, whose fault is that? And why are they, if they can't be against the president when he's reached reach Nixon numbers, or be against him strongly enough, as obviously Senator Feingold believes and you believe, then who's responsible for that? And how do we change it? Well, I don't know who's responsible. Responsible is just that it, <clears throat> we don't have any clear leader of the Democratic Party now. There's too many. There's everybody's running for president. You want to run, by the way, any of you guys? Yeah, I mean, yeah we're, we're, all, we're all thinking about problems. We can't even decide which one of us should run. Because yeah, 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 we yeah. disagree, because we're Democrats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All of you jump. Everybody else is getting in. You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we just don't have a clear leader right now that's speaking out. And I don't know why Clinton's not speaking out more, but he's not. Uh, oh, you meant Bill. Oh, yeah. What did I say? It was You said Clinton, but I never, we don't know which one people Oh, I meant Bill Clinton. Okay. Okay. President. Yeah. Of course I meant that. And... Uh, and Al I thought Gore, you meant George Clinton. My gosh, Al Gore, huh? What's that? No, I'm just kidding. I thought you meant George Clinton. The oh, singer. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, Al Gore's come out, and he's he's taken a few yeah. good uh, hits at it. Would you like to see Al Gore run for president, Senator? Well, you know, I really like Al Gore. Yeah, so I mean, do I. I. I really do. This guy has got it. He understands. I mean, what a different what a different situation it'd be right now if the Supreme Court hadn't interfered. Yeah, well, that would be a, we'd be a lot better off. Let me, uh, Senator, let me get back to but this. Anyway, I, I just want to say, look. I, I, you know, I, I don't know whose fault it is. All I know is that Democrats better get their act together, oh. and, and especially on this century. You know, I just found the good news, I guess, I, someone told me this today, the good news is, is there's uh, 20 Democrats have now signed on to a, uh, 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 a letter uh, uh, asking for a censure of the president. 
the bad news is they wanted to censure President Clinton. <laughs> right. right. No, it's 20 true. Democrats signed a letter back in the late 90s to censure President Clinton right. because he was having a little affair. Here is a president that's violated the Constitution, the law of the land, misled us and lied us into this war, and we don't have the guts to say we we got to at least slap him on the wrist. Well, let, let me let me offer this to you, Senator, and, and I, is that you, since you're having so much trouble getting Democrats to sign on to the censure, here is an opportunity to say to those to the to the what 42 Democrats, if you include Jim Jeffords, who aren't signing on to the censure, to say to them, okay, fine, don't censure him. But let's make an issue out of the warrantless wiretapping over Michael Hayden. Let's take this case to the American people. Let's deliver the rebuke that way. Because the important thing, to me at least, isn't so much to censure the president, but to talk about warrantless wiretapping, to talk about lawbreaking, and to make the American people aware of how serious a crime this was committed by the president. And now finally we have the opportunity and a vehicle for that. Right, here it is, right in front of us again. Now, see, you're right on. You got, okay, people asked me about the censure before. I said, well, it's not so much the censure. It said if we got 42 Democrats more, or if we got you know 42 Democrats on this censure, then all of a sudden it'd be a news story. Right. People start talking about, it and they say, "What's this all about? Why do they want to censure the president? What did he do?" And then you finally get it out there, and people start talking about it. I think that's what you're after. It is, and I think you and can do it here with Michael Hayden. I think we can too, and we should not let this one pass. We should we should be on this. Uh, we should be on this one, I can tell you that. <laughs> Senator Harkin, are there any uh, sen uh, Democratic senators left who still believe that it's a losing issue to talk about this because it's a national security matter? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there are some who think that, you know, we've we got to be careful because it's national security. Well, there may be a couple, you know. I don't want to name names, but there may be a couple out there. And, and I hear them. They say, oh, you know. We shouldn't go after him on this. Uh, people don't understand it because it's national security and that kind of stuff. No. You know, American people aren't that dumb. No, God not. bless and, you. And, you know, you won't, you won't offend us if you do want to name names. So if you ever want to come out and name names, <laughs> you're always welcome to do it. <laughs> we're, all, we're all for that. We're all for you guys are going to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I will say one thing. I'm going to use your show to announce. You know, I've got a, I've got, I'm just telling all your listeners, if you are in favor of, of doing this, I've got an online petition at, at www.tomharkin.com. You can go to it, and it will navigate you to an online petition. You can sign a petition uh, to censure the president if you want to do that. And, and I'll take that to mean you want us to go after Hayden, too. Absolutely. Yeah. That's at tomharkin.com. All right, Senator, we have time for one more question about gas prices. Now, uh, the president says, hey, look, it's supply and demand. What can I do about it? and now pretends that he cares about our addiction to oil and, and he's been concerned about the oil companies all along, whether they're colluding or not. Uh, you know, his position is, seems to be ridiculous. But getting beyond that, what is the, the plan that the Democrats have for actually making a difference on gas prices? Well, first of all, it's not doing what the Republicans want to do. You know, they, they came up with this cockamamie scheme. They're going to send $100 back to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like this. One woman wrote a letter to the editor. She said, oh, I get it. They're going to send me back $100, which I paid in taxes so I can do it. we could go to public schools and to education and things like that. They're going to send me back $100 so I can now give it to the oil companies. <laughs> yeah, that's... She, she got it right away. Yeah. Boy, they, they got off of that one in a hurry, didn't they? Well, yes, they did, yeah. Yeah, they got off of that. Well, I think what we had to do is, first of all, recognize that a year ago the oil companies were making a lot of money at $46 a barrel. Now it's $75 a barrel. didn't cost them a dime more to take the oil out of the ground than that last year. So that's windfall profits. That, that money had to be recouped for us. The second thing we had to do is we had to do everything we can to build more ethanol plants and biodiesel plants in the United States. You know, we've got to get this ethanol done, and we've got to get energy independence, more wind energy, for example, more wind energy tax credits. Senator Harkin, there wouldn't happen to be any ethanol in Iowa, would there? Oh, come on now. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. But, you know, it's not just Iowa. It's every place all over the country. I'm telling you guys, we got 37 million acres of land that's set aside, conservation. You could grow switchgrass on that. And, you know, switchgrass, you could, uh, through cellulose conversion, you can make this into ethanol. One acre of switchgrass has twice the energy as an acre of corn. Think about that. I mean, these 37 million acres of land out there, maybe we couldn't use them all, but I bet you could use 20 million acres to grow 
the fuel we need in America. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's, what we need is we need a president to take the lead on that. Al Gore understands it. No, Al, Al Gore, Gore clearly understands and, it. And Senator Harkin, uh, you know, I started uh, my first political job was in Florida working for the Dukakis-Benson campaign, and uh, my, my first mentor was someone who I, I know you cared for very much, which is Senator uh, Jack Gordon down in, the, oh. in in Florida. Oh, and, one of the most beautiful human beings I've ever met. Yeah, he's a pretty terrific guy. And, um, and we, we, you know, the world lost him this year, sadly. Uh, but I remember Jack saying to me that, that when the Democrats do best, they let the people understand that, the, that they are looking out for the people. And this seems to be, this, this issue of fuel seems to be another layup. I mean, no different than what Ben was saying with Michael Hayden uh, being, being nominated. It seems an avenue down which the Democrats can go if they want to convince the people that they're taking care of them. And, and what are the Democrats going to do to sort of to, to announce that, to, to let the people hear that? Well, I think, first of all, what we have to do is, is we have to come out very tough very tough and forward on the uh, windfall profits. Right. That, that's one thing. Secondly, we've got to be extremely strong and do everything we can to provide tax credits and stuff for more ethanol plant and biodiesel production. Third, we've got to mandate, mandate that, uh, that, uh, that Detroit start building flexible fuel vehicles. Right. Brazil, Brazil in three years went, went to 70% of all their automobiles flexible fuel. If they can do it in Brazil, we can do it. And, and not only that, in Brazil, there are American cars that are running on it. So if American cars can run on it in Brazil, they can certainly run on it here. Yeah, these are Chevys and Fords down right. there, you know. That's, that's, absurd. That's, that's exactly right. So I think if we come out strong for those things and and uh, and uh, and say, no, we don't have to drill in the Arctic Wildlife Refuge. We don't have to do that. None of that oil is going to come here anyway. Right. And hold out a vision for the American people of energy independence based upon renewable fuels that are clean burning, that don't despoil the environment. I think, I think people will respond to that, but we've got to be very tough and very strong on it. Senator Harkin, I told a small lie earlier because I have one last quick question for you. All right. Uh, and uh, you mentioned Al Gore now a second time there. If Al Gore comes out uh, and says he's going to run for president, will you campaign for him in Iowa? Well, look, you know, come on, you guys, you're going to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it goes without saying, I really like Al Gore. I just, uh, I, he understands the environment. He understands the issue of energy. He was, uh, he came out uh, strongly opposed to the war in Iraq. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, the guy, he's, he's got a lot to offer, and I, I'll just have to see what he does. I, I hate to avoid the question, but, well, the answer is I don't know right How now. How about this? Tell him to run. The country's better off if he throws his name in, and there are a lot of people out there who we talk to who are ready to support him. Well, I'll tell you, he, he's, he's good, and like I said, he gets it. And Well, look, come on, he really was elected president. He was? Yeah, yeah of course he was. He was. Yeah. And the Supreme Court uh, uh, stole it away from him. Yeah, well, it looks like Sandra Day O'Connor now maybe perhaps re regretting, regretting that to some degree. But. Uh, <laughs> Senator Tom Harkin, thank you, thank you, thank you for the time uh, you gave us. It was a real pleasure to talk well, to you. Well, thanks. Sir. Keep up your great work, you guys. Thank, thank you, you, Senator.